check out this awesome chest my parents bought. So cool, so rustic, got a lot of character. The hope with this chest was to store some blankets and pills in it like this. This is what we envisioned. But if you look at it, the wood is really rough. So yeah, if we were to store blankets in there, they're gonna all get snagged. Don't worry, it was time for a solution. Hey crafters, it's Amanda here. Welcome to my channel. So today's project is not actually really going to feature me. I actually didn't do this project. My very cool parents did this project. So my mom wanted a chest to store some blankets and pillows in. She found this really cool chest, got a good deal for it. And when she got it, it was really cool looking. Except there was one problem. The inside was rough as all get out. So she was trying to think through how do we fix this? So at first we were thinking, okay, we could get some extra wood and just kind of line it on the inside because it would make it stronger and it would prevent the blankets and pillows from snagging. But that's a lot of time and more resources into this project and she wasn't really a fan of that option. So instead she came up with a creative solution. So today's video, you're going to see me kind of giving commentary on the little clips my mom filmed. You'll get to hear my mom talking and explaining what's going on in some of the clips. So I'm just gonna share this cool project with you guys today and it might help you out if you've run into a similar problem. The hope was to put blankets in here, but the problem is the inside, again, has a lot of character, but unfortunately the wood was a little bit rough. So we thought we could sand it down, which we could, but the problem is there are lots of little nails like this. Those are screws, there's some um, nails you can see down here, down in the bottom, and any kind of sanding that we started doing, we quickly realized that it's not going to work because those nails are too sharp. They're going to snag the blankets, and this chest is apparently fairly old, and so the nails and screws sticking through tended to just break. So we knew we had to come up with a different solution to line the inside of this chest to make it more usable for putting blankets and pillows into that um, it wouldn't snag them. So yes, that is our goal, to line the chest. Now to line the chest, you obviously need to know the dimensions. This chest is 23 inches deep, about 39 inches wide, and 18 inches tall. So my mom had the super smart idea to get a mover's blanket. We got this one just from Harbor's Freight. Not too expensive, but it's got some padding to it so that way, you know, the plushness will be soft on the blankets and all those little things that will poke into it. They might poke into the mover's blanket a little bit, but they won't go all the way through. So now that she had her material, the mom had to go ahead and cut it to size. Okay, so I decided that the measurements need to be 57 and a quarter by 73 and a quarter, but I'm actually going to add two inches to that 57 and a quarter measurement. Um, so I have something to fold over because you see how this has a nice edge right here. Well, when I make my cut through this fabric here, it's going to have an open edge. So what I'm going to do is leave an extra two inches so I can flip it over and have a clean edge um, along that side as well. Yeah, I just got to pause for a moment and brag on my mom. Isn't she so smart? See, she knew that if she just cut it, sure, it would work. But she was like, okay, if I just leave myself a little bit of extra, what she's gonna do is she's gonna fold it over to create a nice edge. My mom's so smart. Okay, honestly, this part here is like really dizzying to watch. What she's gonna do is she's gonna cut out corners, like these rectangles out of the fabric and she's gonna get it all to size. You see that she's got her line on there, yada, yada, yada. And also, she also accidentally mismeasured at one point. So she kind of like drew the line and then drew another line. But the gist of what she's doing right now is she is measuring the dimensions, she's getting it marked on the blanket, and then she's gonna make some cuts in a bit here. Yeah, that's what happened. So I see this line here on the left as I started marking my supposed 59 inch mark, and I got part way across. I'm like, wait a minute, that's the 48 inch mark that I used. So um, yeah, so I ignore the line on the left, and that can just go on the bloopers reel. Before I go further, I want to make sure that I haven't messed anything up and that this is really going to work. I still have to cut out the corners to make it fit, but we're going to see what this, how this is going to be. Okay, this is also another example of my mom's really smart. Check this idea out. Okay, so I've marked out the corners where I have to cut them out. Um, I need to have a 17 and a quarter by 17 and a quarter inch square cut out of each side but um, I wanted to leave a little extra to wrap around. So what I've done is this line here is 17 inches, but this line coming down here 
it's only 15 inches coming down into there because I want to leave an extra two inches on here and then at the other end so that when I fold these sides up that I'll have two extra inches right here that I can make a fold kind of on this line in the corner and wrap it around so this this piece here will wrap around the corner and go behind this piece when it's standing up on the side and that's what I've done on all my other ones. I did go ahead and mark this extra two inches so when I cut this side I need to cut this side all the way down here because it does need to be 17 inches because from here up to there is what is going to be standing up that's the depth of the trunk but then when I make my cut I'm only coming um, a 15 inch distance on this piece here so that gives me that little extra flap okay it might not make sense right now but when you see the foresight you're gonna be like Whoa, it's really smart this is a great idea. Basically what she's doing is instead of actually cutting out the 17 inch corner on one of the sides, so like on this side, she's leaving this extra flap that's not attached, it's not attached here, this extra flap like this, so she can tuck it behind the other side. You'll see in a minute what I'm talking about. Okay, so I've cut this out, and now I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. This is why I kept the notch. So really I've cut, it's kind of like a 17 by 17 inch piece because I've left this piece here to be an, um, a flap. So this is going to fold up when it's in the trunk this is going to fold up and then you see how we have the extra here that's going to wrap around so when we do it I will first staple this piece around to the end and then this piece will come up and be on top of it so that it wraps it makes the little corner a little bit cleaner so I've got all the corners cut out on the blanket you can see basically all those flaps sticking out those are what are going to be lifted up we'll fold them up to put them on the sides of the chest, and then the other piece will obviously be in the bottom. Okay, so I've got the first face kind of lined up, and it's what's nice is that because the wood is rough, which is really the reason we're doing this whole project, it kind of is holding the, uh, the fabric in place which is good. And this isn't a perfect job. This doesn't require absolute precision. Um, I had to work and get this corner down in here. You can see there's a flap um, that's gonna go around and then this piece eventually will come up. But we're gonna go ahead and staple this first face in here and then we'll probably move over to that side and then work our way around. So then we get my dad involved and he gets out the staple gun and starts stapling it into place. As you can see, that's the front edge of the chest there and it's lined up along the edge. All right, so now we've got the first face attached. He's gonna work out the slack here and staple up the next side. So again, we have another example of smart thinking. There's the hinge there. As you watch, it kind of goes in there. Well, if they kind of get on the camera, but you get the idea. So we didn't want to staple all along there because we didn't want to stop the hinge from moving. So we left some gaps. So here you can see she's taking it and she is folding it over so that way we have a nice edge because those are the edges that she cut so they weren't already pre-seamed. And she also did the same thing on the left side. And as you can see, the left side turned out really nice. Same thing basically on the back. She just leaves enough folded over so the staple gun can get through the front of the fabric and that back flap. And now for the finished project. Dun, dun, dun. See, it looks so good, and now we don't have to worry about blankets and pillows getting snagged in there. It's lined really nicely. Um, did a, my parents did a great job cutting it out, getting it measured, fitting it in there. Pretty simple project, and I think it's a really smart way to tackle something like this because yes, we could have gone with the extra wood and it would have strengthened the chest, but also be a lot more resources, a lot more time and energy. This is a really quick fix that made this really cool item so usable and so practical. And here we have the finished working product in the bedroom. It's got our extra pillows and blankets in there and we are good to go. Well, anyways, I hope that you enjoyed this video and this project. I think my parents are super cool. They did a great job with this. And so shout out to them for filming this for me. Also, if you are not already a subscriber, make sure you hit that button down below, hit the little bell so you get notified. Now to those of you who are my loyal subscribers and followers, first of all, I love each and every one of you so much. Second of all, you might have wondered what in the world happened to me. If you keep up with my community tab on my channel page, 
then you probably saw that I've been dealing with some health things and so I just needed to take some time off for me and focus on my health first, but that does not mean I am giving up on YouTube by no means. As I'm having good days, so today I'm feeling a little bit okay, I'm trying to get some content put together. Now, just because I have a good day today doesn't mean the next day will be a good day, so I might be filming this and then like a week might go by before I actually post this. But anyways, as of today, I was looking on my YouTube analytics and it's been 39 days since I last posted. Like, I normally don't go more than seven days between posting. So 39 days is absolutely ridiculous. Again, I am so sorry, but hopefully, hopefully, fingers crossed, I will be, I will be getting some new content back out on my channel regularly as I get feeling better. So anyways, just in case you were wondering what happened to me, but in the meantime, I've got tons of other projects on my channel. So definitely go watch some of those and keep crafting and stay creative. So I hope you all are doing well. Thanks so much for the support and happy crafting.